Hi and welcome to Politics Tech Lightning. I have a story for you today that comes right from the trenches. A very difficult customer conversation with regards to the placement of an Azure Firewall and Application Gateway. So let's get into it. Here we go. There are two major mechanisms to protect your workload from internet traffic in Azure. You have the Azure Firewall and the Application Gateway. The Application Gateway is only meant for HTTP, HTTPS traffic, meaning if you have other non-HTTPS applications, the traffic needs to enter through the Azure Firewall. However, in our case, our customer has an HTTPS application running in Azure, which they want to make accessible from the internet. It's quite clear based on that requirement that we actually need to use an application gateway for this. In the application gateway, we also want to enable the web application firewall, which provides an additional layer of security on top of this. The customer, they stated that their security policy requires all traffic from the public internet to first hit the Azure firewall, and only afterwards it can hit other devices such as the application gateway. Now, while technically the flow of first hitting the Azure firewall and then the application gateway, it will work, it has very limited benefits in this scenario. Now, as a good architect, you will explain that the recommended flow from Microsoft is actually to hit the application gateway first and then the app Azure firewall and afterwards the traffic will actually go to the application itself. At this point, the customer, they still insist that it's impossible to deviate from their policy of traffic first entering through the Azure firewall. You keep on argumenting why they actually need to revise their policy as traffic will always also hit the Azure firewall just not at the first entry. Also, there's a web application firewall enabled on the application gateway, which is also a type of firewall in order to keep the environment secure. Regardless of the arguments that you bring, their policy, it has to be followed. You then ask them, how are you going to do this? How will you handle having multiple application gateways behind the Azure firewall? Because let's say the customer, you will expand into several applications in the future and they may need multiple application gateways. The customer responds to this, that this is not an issue. You can do this in rules with the Azure Firewall. They explain that based on the FQDN, fully qualified domain name, that you enter in the browser, the Azure Firewall will redirect it to corresponding application gateway. This is where you step in with your technical knowledge and clearly state, this is not possible using Azure Firewall rules. Now, the customer, they have done their homework and they show you a paper, printed out paper with detailed instruction on how to request from the internet to the Azure Firewall public IP address and then based on the FQDNs, route the request to the different application gateways. You look at these instructions, you review them, they look very detailed and well written. So at that point, you start questioning yourself. Is it a possibility? Is there a way for the Azure Firewall to route FQDNs to different application gateways? Well, that's where I step in. Let me show you the thought process on how to debunk this quickly with very little knowledge of the inner workings of an Azure Firewall. You need to have a very basic understanding of the OSI model. Now, quickly explained, the OSI model is a seven-layer model which tries to visualize and show how data communication works. We just need to focus on layer seven which is the application layer, and layer three to four, which is network and transport layer. To do any routing based on FQDNs, a device needs to operate on layer seven, application. That's where you can see which FQDNs are being used and therefore route the traffic accordingly. A device operating on layer three or four is lower than the stack and is not able to read and understand FQDNs. So if we look at the application gateway, this one works at layer seven. Whenever traffic hits this device, you can make routing decisions based on FQDNs. An Azure Firewall is actually a device which operates on the layers starting from seven to three. While most consider this as a layer three and four device, there are certain functions which operate at layer seven. Now, knowing this, let's look at the type of rules which can be configured in the Azure Firewall. So for the different type of rules that we have, we have, for example, we have DNet rules, we have the network rules, we have the application rules. 
Now, DNet rules are the ones we want to use for inbound traffic from the internet to an internal application. However, if we need to do any routing based on FQDNs, we need these DNet rules to operate at layer 7 of the OSI model. Now, you can quickly look up this, and this is not the case. DNet rules are not operating at layer 7, which means that they cannot be used to route based on FQDNs. Looking at the network rules, we can see that the same story is there. They can be applied to both inbound and outbound traffic that are running at layer 3 to 4 of the OSI model. Same limitation here. There's no FQDN routing possible. Now, what about application rules then? Because these actually operate on layer 7 and can potentially make routing decisions based on FQDNs. However, application rules, they're used only for outbound traffic. They cannot be used for inbound, which make them not applicable in our case. So now, based on your knowledge of the OSI model and the layers which of the rules of the Azure Firewall operate on, you can clearly state and convince the customer that their current setup has to change. Now, where did the customer get the detailed instructions on how to configure the FQDN routing in the Azure Firewall? So think about it, where could I have gotten all these detailed instructions? Well, I'm sure you guessed it. It turns out they had used a large language model, LLM, AI, such as ChatGPT or Copilot to get the instruction. And when ChatGPT hallucinates a wrong answer, it does so incredibly convincing that you are starting to doubt yourself. But hey, armed with the knowledge in this video, there should not be any more doubts. So there you have it, folks. One of the many interesting real discussions that happens out there in the world for our architects. I have described how you can use the OSI model and the thought process to come up with real world answers. And this will be applicable not only in this scenario, but many other scenarios where you go into discussions. Until next time, take care, see ya.